That's my wife and I love her to death. She's everything to me, but you can tell how excited she is to be working on the airplane. More on that later. So I wanted to address just a little confusion or something that I noticed. I remember I had a previous builder or I purchased the plane up to a pretty good point of wing construction from a previous builder. And when I was getting ready to finish up the wings, I noticed one little tiny thing on the wings. It's really not a big deal, but I wanted to bring it to your attention to pay, to pay attention to this closer. So I'm gonna bring up some pictures here and you'll see. I want you to look at the two different nut plates here. Look at this nut plate, um, how it's kind of got that dome back there. And then look at this nut plate, where is it? Right there, where there's less of that dome. See the difference? So what happens is when you countersink like this, that pushes through the skin and it sticks out the back. So you need a nut plate that can receive that. When you machine countersink, there's nothing pushing through the back. So you don't need the nut plate like this. You can use the nut plate like that. And so it's really not a big deal, but basically the builder had done this whole row with um, the correct nut plate here and then the incorrect nut plate here, 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 and here. And then I noticed it because this row wasn't done yet. And when I went to the plans, it called out for a different one here and then a different one here, as you saw by the numbers. And so it's not a big deal, but just pay close attention to that. Pay close attention to everything, but pay close attention to that when you're working on this part yourself. So as my neighbor John and I are back riveting and finishing up these wings, he's helping from the front. A um, Couple of quick tips here, just things that I learned. Again, some of you started sooner on this project. Some of you are building the empanages first. I kinda, this was the first big part of my plane that I built, cause I didn't build the empanage. I got it from um, the guy that I bought the plane from. So this was really nerve wracking for us. It took us a long time to kind of get going. But once we got going, a couple of things. One, we needed the offset or the double offset for the back riveting at one point for a few of the different rivets. And let me tell you, get one hand on there cause that baby wants to twist and turn. So I think you'll see there, sometimes I was not having a hand like on the metal bar and it would slip around a little bit. So put one hand on the, the extension and one hand on the gun just to kind of hold it straight, but it will absorb some of the power. So it's gonna have to rivet longer or you'll have to turn it up. But we got the hang of it, it took a little while. Packing tape on the bucking bar in front seems to work the best. We've tried masking tape, we tried different kinds of masking tape, but good, thick, clear packing tape. A little trick I've learned is I put just a tiny, tiny bit of any oil or like WD-40 on the, the metal part of the gun and the rubber part of the rivet gun before I put the packing tape on. It still will stick, but you could actually take it off. And um, another big thing in, is work from the middle out. So I know the instructions say this, but it's really important, like work at an intersection and start there and go a couple rivets up, a couple rivets out, and then a couple more up, and then a couple more out, and then kind of do this plus pattern where you go up and out until you reach the next intersection and then do it again and do it again. And that way you get a really nice tight skin. You push any of the, um, I don't wanna say air bubbles, but in a way like air bubbles, like wrinkles in the skin out when you do that. Now, also make sure you're doing that when you're clecoing and final drilling. This was already clecoed and final drilled, so we were just riveting in that pattern, but that works great. And then the more clecos, the better. Do not be shy on clecos. I think people say that the kit says you only need like 100 or 150 clecos. I probably have like 500 of the silver clecos. And boy, I mean, I love having a ton of clecos. The more clecos, the better. So if you're ordering clecos, 
get a lot of them and use a lot of them. Don't be stingy with them. Don't be like every third or every fourth hole. Like use as many as you can. You'll see when I'm doing the leading edge later, I do that. Um, but again, this is John, my neighbor. Um, this is my son helping out. And uh, he was a big helper. He loved putting the rivets in the holes while we were bucking them. So that's cool. And then we took a little break. We played some cornhole or we made those cornholes. Actually, a neighbor is a woodworker and he had like a leftover set, an extra set that he never finished. And so we took a day off from working on the plane and I sanded them and filled them in with putty and got them nice and smooth and then stained them and painted them. They came out fine. I wasn't really trying to make anything super fancy, but now we have cornhole, which is super fun. We took a trip to Fredericksburg as the family for the day, just to head out there and do something different and have some lunch at the airport with the family. So that was fun. And then you'll see here, you kind of got to get into some uncomfortable positions sometimes when you're when you're working on the airplane. I can't tell you if it, w if it worked out better for us to do the leading edges like this when it was horizontal on a table. Some people have them on their wing stands. We could have done it where it was mounted to one table and hanging off the other. This just worked for us. Um, and then again, my wife helping out again with rivets and things, but she was watching the Dodger playoff game and if you remember from the beginning, getting a little bored and yawning, you can tell how excited she looks here, right? But at least she's helping, which is awesome. I love my wife and I love that her and my son are taking a small role in this project because I think when we finish it, they're gonna feel so much more attached and it's gonna help us wanna finish it. So you have an option when you're attaching the leading edge through the spar. For the first couple of spots, you can use pull rivets or you can buck them. I will never buck a rivet if I don't have to. So I absolutely opted for the pool or pop rivets and that's just the Harbor Freight gun and I did have to make a wedge. Uh, the van's instructions shows you to use some trailing edge and you can drill a hole in it to make a little wedge that way you can hold your pool rivet gun at an angle but still get a straight pull on it and it's all explained in the instructions but I did need to use a wedge there. And then... Um, You'll see here, I really wanted to back rivet the bottom row of, of um, rivets to the leading edge, but we just were not able to do it. So I couldn't get the gun in there. I couldn't, um, I couldn't with a short, I have like a short back rivet attachment that wouldn't fit. It still hit. I tried the double offset. I don't know why they call it a double offset, but they do. That wouldn't fit. So we had to uh, rivet from the front, buck in the back. Um, and here's John and another friend helping out. His name's Ben, and Ben did a great job. Ben made one little mistake, no big deal. It was our last rivet of both leading edges, but we had to drill it out and redo it. I guess you just get kind of lazy at the end. like that and there but at the end of the day take a look at this i could not be happier with the way that the leading edges meet up to the uh, top skin i mean just as smooth as possible it looks fantastic so i just could not be happier with that and then here we are moving the wings off the work tables and putting them back on the bench and if you'll notice i put the wings with the open side the bottom the open bay out and what that's going to allow us to do is to install all the push rods and pitot tubes and servos without me having to take them off of the wing stands again. And my plan is I'm going to do the fuel tanks, build the ailerons, build the flaps, and most people wait to finish the wings until later on. I'm pretty certain I'm going to go with Dynon. So it, once I get the fuel tanks done and build the ailerons and the flaps, I'm gonna probably go ahead and order the pitot tube with we the heater so and the AOA we indicator in inches. it from Dynon okay. and order my autopilot servos from Dynon as well. Get those installed. I got the zip tips coming, the zip tip premieres with the curve up, put those on, 
close up the wings, I mean, be done with the wings, wiring and everything, be done with the vertical stabilizers, the horizontal stabilizers, the rudders, the elevators, and get all that stuff out of the house and in storage before the fuselage and finish kit arrive. So that's my plan, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, by now, I should have a Patreon page if you wanna check that out. Also, if you decide to order a Vans kit, go ahead and use my builder number. I'll have it on my website, pilotrhino.com, or below this video. I get 100 bucks and it doesn't cost you anything, which is a great way to support us. But again, you can check it out on Patreon. You can, if you're enjoying these videos, you can donate a dollar or something a month, which would be great. And again, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Have a great one, bye-bye.